This is Agisoft Metashape. It's a program that we're using for photogrammetry at DMAF. Looks like this, by the way. Uh, it's, we have five computers that are running it, or you can also download a trial version, which is fully functioning, uh, that will work for 30 days. The general workflow is all done in this workflow tab. So the first thing I did was add the photos, and I selected them all, and then I added them. And these little dots that it's added are actually tie points um, that it has processed afterwards. But when you first open up the photos, you won't have these tie points. You can see that the images are quite grainy. I've got an ISO of 1600 here. That allowed me to have a fast shutter speed as I walked around Gracie taking lots of photos. So the next thing you would do after having added those photos would be to align the photos. And doing that will create these tie points. And then you'll end up with a scene that looks like this. And this next bit is actually maybe perhaps the most frustrating part of the program is creating this rectangular box that you want it to calculate. You'll see something like this with a whole heap of uh, where it thinks your photos have been taken. You can just make out Gracie in there uh, and it might be easier if you turn off the camera thumbnails. You can just make out Gracie in there. When you're on this arrow one here where I'm pointing now, you click and hold and you can rotate around the scene. But when you're using these buttons to redefine the region, say we wanted it to be a little bit bigger, or we wanted to move the region around, or we wanted to rotate the region so that it was perhaps had a better correlation with the ground plane. Now the rotating function isn't working like it is when I have this one selected. But uh, if you have a computer that has a number pad on it, you can use the buttons to rotate around your object, which can be super useful to assist you flying around your model. So once you've done that part and you've made that box, if you've tightened that up so it's more around what you actually want to calculate, you can then click on the next workflow bit, which would be to build a dense cloud. And you'll end up with more tie points, basically. And you can start to see a lot clearer what the actual 3D scan um, is coming out like. I'll see this extra noise around here. If we go onto this tool here, we can use these different selecting tools and remove areas which are just noise and then clicking X or selecting delete and that'll get rid of those. Another useful way to do that would be to perhaps select what you, if there's like lots of noise all over the place, you can select the bit that you want, edit inverse selection and it inverts and then you could say delete that. I'm gonna undo that, control Z. The next thing to do in the workflow would be to create a mesh. And when you do that, it'll take a little while to calculate and then you'll end up with the mesh of your object. Um, and the last thing to do would be to put a texture on that mesh and you'll end up with model textured. And then once you've done that, you can export it by going file, export, export model. And it's a good idea to actually create a folder to um, put your mesh in because there's not just an OBJ, which we can see here, but there's actually two or the smaller files, which are the texture on top of that. I'll show you in um, Explorer. See, there's actually an MTL file and a .tif file, and those extra files are needed to create a shaded uh, textured mesh. So if we put this on here, it's grabbing those extra files and we can see them um, in the mesh. An STL file is just going to look like this without any texture or photo rendering on top of it. But that might be all you need if you just need the form of your object. Another really useful tool for cleaning up your model is this gradual selection tool. It'll become available for you to use once you've created an actual mesh. Uh, so the mesh might have lots of little small speckles and if you click on the model gradual selection and the connecting component size, you can filter out all of those smaller objects with this button. I've actually already done it, so there's nothing to filter out. Um, but if you had smaller little particles here, you could select it with that, and then you could eventually hit the X and delete 
all of those components. Decimate it, which means um, reduce the poly count of the mesh, smooth it, play around with these as well. Another useful function in this program are masks. So down here, here under show masks, I've already um, created a mask on this, this one here. We could perhaps select an area like a rectangle and have that area added to the selection. And so what that means, it's like an alpha mask. So here in the preview down here, you can actually see um, these areas also added in, into this little preview. And the software is going to ignore these areas. The reason why you might want to do this is if you were uh, moving your model and keeping your camera on a tripod and the background isn't going to change, so you'd want to mask out the background and that way you can end up scanning an object without moving around it by moving the actual model itself. There's more about this in the manual.